Hi, my name is Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video I need to explain just how thick the people in charge of our pandemic response in the UK are because there'll be people inside the country, outside the country looking in and going, how can you make these mistakes? There are other countries, to be fair, that are making serious errors, but they seem to learn a lot quicker than us. And it really is, and I'm going to demonstrate how, it really is because the people running our show are as thick as mints. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So the old adage, never ascribe to malice that which may be explained by incompetence. And the problem is when you're sort of thinking about uh, the, what's causing various things that go wrong under Boris Johnson's government, you're never really sure because on the one hand they are malicious, but on the other hand they're also incompetent. And, and which one is responsible for a particular thing going wrong is always difficult. And, and part of the reason, of course, is they people cover for them. I mean, flicking through the headlines this morning was particularly hilarious because from the vast majority of the mainstream media, you know, it was this where... We're having it pointed out that Boris Johnson at the moment is trying to avoid uh, another national lockdown. But in reality, lockdowns are happening all over the place. Um, we now know there are over 10 million people in this country already living under a lockdown. Hospitals told to clear their beds to get ready uh, for what is to come. Now, I need to do a separate video on that this weekend because that is particularly bad. Cases increasing 75% in a week. Um, you know, even the Daily Stars getting in on it and talking about how, you know, oh, where, where do we think this went wrong then? Where do we think uh, the fact that people aren't following the guidelines went wrong? Um, you know, the po possibility of an unlicensed vaccine being used just because the government will be so desperate for something like Trump, they'll just back anything because it might work. And if it doesn't work and it does terrible things, well, they'll worry about that later because that's what this government does, worries about things later. Um, you know, the test and trace has, has completely collapsed. Um, and 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 this is happening. It doesn't matter where you're looking. Left wing media, right wing media, wherever. They're all saying this. Oh, but oh, look, the Daily Express. Hey, we could get test results back in under in just 90 minutes, an hour and a half. You have a test. 90 minutes. Isn't it fantastic to do this all the time? The media are going, there's a serious situation here. Serious situation. Our government is failing. The Express goes, no, no, don't pay attention to them. Look, marvellous. Mar they were the ones who were said we we're going to have a vaccine by now. I'm looking at a watch. Um, <laughs> when I mean the time of year, September. Um, we're going to have a vaccine now. A million people were going to have been vaccinated by now. More, in fact, because it was going to be a million by September. I don't know how many they thought it was going to be by midway through September. Um, and now, of course, they're, they're pulling this. So, OK, there's the possibility of getting test results in 90 minutes. Fantastic. Are we getting our test results in 90 minutes? No, because the number of people getting their test results, even in 24 hours, has massively dropped by 50 percent in the last week. The number of people getting their test results within 24 hours has dropped. Um, Boris Johnson tried to say that there was about 80 percent of people getting their test results back in 24 hours in Parliament this week. Turns out that was not the case. The official figures say it's 33%. There's a bit of a difference there, Boris, isn't there? Uh, and and, and the, the, the icing on the cake for this this week was... So Dido Harding, for those who don't know, she's a former jockey. As far as I can tell, that's the only thing she's ever done and been... She, well, I don't, I don't follow horse racing. Was she successful? She was a jockey. She occasionally got on a horse and didn't fall off too much. I mean, that's fairly successful. That's probably more than I could do. Um, but whenever she's tried to run anything big, she's been chief executive of various things. They've always been a disaster. And I mean a disaster. I don't just mean she didn't do well. An actual disaster. And she runs our test and trace program. Yeah, it's been a disaster. And she's also going to be the one. So they're replacing Public Health England. The umbrella organization for managing healthcare in, in England and they're replacing it with some privatized monstrosity and she is being billed to head it up it's not been formally appointed yet I don't believe um, as adverts have gone out but in reality we're told that she's going to be doing it 
And she had to present herself to MPs this week. Select committee and answer questions. And there were a few things. I mean, first of all, Dawn Butler, who's a Labour MP, was um, talking about, uh, you know, the numbers of people being tested. Because uh, the, the government, I mean, Boris Johnson was tr trying to say in, par in Parliament this week, 240,000 people a day are being tested. Well, that's not true. Um, the actual number is much lower. It's well under 100,000 a day. At the moment, at the moment I'm doing this, it's 80,000 a day on average. Now, um, Dawn Butler quoted the, the real number that it was. To which Dido Harding said, and I need to quote this, I'm sorry, but that's just not true. And I don't know where you got that number from. Well, she told her where she got the number from. She got the number from her own report. Dido Harding's own organisation's report that gave those numbers. And it's on the government website, right there, all the way there. And this is, so not only has Dido Harding been exposed as a liar, but someone who's not even command of her own brief, she's been quoted a number to actually then say, well, I don't know where you got the number from. That MP has quoted the number. She knows where she's got it from. And she's about to tell you, you're going to, you know, you're going to look stupid if it's from your own report. And indeed it was. And she also said, and this was, this was absolutely spectacular. She also said that the reason why we're doing so badly at the moment, now I'll tell you how badly we're doing at the moment. There are three quarters of a million people every single day needing a test and can't get a test. Three quarters of a million people cannot get a test. Now, look at it this way. If at the moment we've got about 80,000 people a day getting a test, and that itself is a significant improvement on last week, if that, you know, that is the official figure. If that is happening, and of course, tests being taken is not the same thing as results getting back. I want, I want them to only count tests, not only if they're taken, but if the results are back as well. Because there are some people not getting results at all, not just having to wait more than 24 hours, not getting them at all. But 80,000 getting the tests, 750,000 not. So you're talking about only one in nine people needing a test. Really, one in eight, one in nine-ish, one in eight and a half, are actually getting that test. So if you've got a group of 17 people, say, that need a test, only two of them are getting it. I mean, that really puts it into perspective. The vast majority of people who need a test are not getting one at all. Of course, the number of... And we look at the number of cases at the moment, it's just climbing and climbing and climbing. And I look at it this way. Germany, who, you know, they got caught out. Uh, they reacted quicker than some other countries in Europe, most other countries in Europe. They're having their second wave. It is not nearly as many cases as the first wave. Their second wave is smaller than their first wave. France... Their second wave is larger than their first wave because they, again, keep dropping the ball. But at the same time, when they realise this, they do react. Britain is behind these countries. We're behind them. Now, we're already in a worse position than Germany. We're not in as bad a position as France at the moment, but we are three weeks behind them. Who is going to believe that when we don't even react, even when we realise how badly we're doing that our situation isn't going to be much, much worse than France's. And, and, and if you're thinking to yourself, well, it won't be as bad, we will learn lessons. Right, listen to this. Dido Harding, the person who is running our test and trace system, first of all, blamed SAGE, the scientific group, for, as she said it, insufficiently predicting the huge September test demand. Now, here's the thing. One, that will not be true. We have been hearing for weeks and weeks and weeks from the government's own scientific advisors, as well as more independent ones, that September it's all going to kick off. And why is it going to kick off? You don't even have to be clever to know the answer to this. Why is it going to kick off? First of all, we could see the second wave all, over August s s kicking off in Europe. We knew we were behind them in the first wave, so of course we'd be behind them in the second wave. So we knew the second wave was beginning in Europe, and therefore it'd be heading our way as well. Second of all, What's happening in September? Oh, September's it's just a normal month, isn't it? Nothing particular happens in September. Oh, wait, I know. Schools are going to be reopening for the first time in over half a year. Every school in the country, 
every college fully open, not just a little bit, not letting in some, letting in everyone. Of course we knew there would be massive demand in September. You would have to be a spectacular imbecile not to think that. But she has said that. The person in charge of our testing has gone, do you know what? We didn't expect a, a, an extra demand in September. What? What? This is the person in charge of our response. And she also said, because now what she's got to do, she's in a position where she can't supply the number of tests needed. So they're now rationing them. So now she's trying to get people to not get tests when they really need them to keep the demand low. So she said as well that if a member of staff in a restaurant tests positive for COVID, there is no need for the rest of the staff to be tested unless they show symptoms. Then what is the point? What is the point of the testing system if the people who've been exposed to it are not going to be tested? So now what she's saying is all those staff will just need to isolate for two weeks, which is the official position, by the way. Just need to isolate. So then that, that business has no staff. Well done. Excellent. And, and you know, Matt Hancock's going around. He's the health secretary. He's going around saying, you know, we've, we've all got to follow the rules. This is deadly serious. This is, a, and this is his exact words. This is a very serious increase in the disease. People need to follow the rules full stop, emphasising this. And as someone pointed out, a little problem with this statement, Matt, uh, one is his own department, who's the one who issues the rules, the actual rules, not guidance, but he issues the guidance as well, but the regulations, the, the laws that, that govern how you're supposed to behave, he issues them literally minutes before they go live. The new regulations that have been put in place now, they've basically cancelled everything else. We thought it's a bit messy. It was a bit messy. So they've now just got, they've tidied it up, even though it looks still horrendously messy. But that's because they've had to cancel so many other regulations. And they issued it 20 minutes before they went live. So they made new criminal offences, prosecutable criminal offences, 20 minutes before they went live. 20 minutes to midnight before people could possibly, um, you know, come to grips with them. And then the second thing is that he also represents a government that has openly said it's going to break the law. So why on earth should people in this country obey the law if they don't want to? And, and again, you know, and, and it is stupidity because you don't have to do that. It, it's stupidity. We have a prime minister who didn't realise that America would do its not over our breach of the, or even threatened breach of the Northern Ireland Protocol. We, that's what they're saying now. Government ministers genuinely did not anticipate this. How thick do you have to be? You know, Jacob Rees-Mogg, member of the government, he's the guy who wanted people to cram themselves into the commons during the pandemic. And, and they went, no, it's too dangerous. He says, well, we just need separating, surely. We'll have perspex screens up. So we'll have perspex screens up the side of everyone. Yeah, yeah. But then you'll need them in front and behind as well. R right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I suppose so. So you're going to basically put them in a perspex box. How are they going to get in and out of their seats? If you've got perspex screens everywhere, are you going to airlift them, airdrop them into each, each thing? And he went, oh, thick as hell. You know, we've got Matt Hancock. Two weeks ago, we're saying that the government's handling means we're going to avoid the second spike. Doing exactly what they did in March. You know, in March, remember in March, when they were pointing at other countries in Europe that got the wave before we did. You go, ah, look at them tossers. Ah, oh, we're fine. We're fine. We know what we're doing. What do you mean we're, we're having trouble? Oh, crap. What do you mean we're going to have to lock down? We said we wouldn't lock down. We ridiculed people who locked down. We can't lock down. Oh, bugger, we've got to lock down. It's the same thing happening now. Same thing. We ridiculed other countries and said we're going to avoid this. And we didn't. We said, he said that two weeks ago. We made exactly the same mistake. Days later, it was fairly obvious we weren't going to avoid it. And... and you know, and now we've got the head of Test and Trace who didn't know that September would bring us more cases when this very thing was being discussed, not only by experts, but by the general population for weeks beforehand. She must be the only person in the country that was not talking about this. And she's in charge of the bloody programme. 
And her reward for this crass incompetence is being given the job of managing all healthcare issues in England, not just test and trace. So yeah, never ascribe to malice that which may be explained by incompetence. Yes, they are malicious. Yes, they have nefarious plans, but they are as thick as mints because they didn't have to put an idiot in charge of healthcare matters in England. They could still have given this to private companies who, who give them some kickbacks. It could still have been done corruptly. They didn't have to put an idiot in charge. They did do, because they only promote their own. And unfortunately, their own are all idiots. But anyway, there it is. That might explain it for people who are a bit perplexed. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.